Hey everyone, it's Tracy Martirana here from Holistic Wellness with Tracy, and today I'm here to teach you how to meditate. So let's talk meditation. I have had the privilege of teaching over a hundred people how to meditate, and I love it because when you get to watch someone's first experience with meditation, it is amazing. Or even maybe not their very first meditation, but the first time when they realize that they can do it, that there's no trick to it, that it's actually very simple. So let's start with one of the first basic questions that most people will ask, and that is why? Why should I meditate? What is the benefit? And I have to say, if you don't know this, <laughs> you're probably living under a rock because I feel like the benefits of meditation have been touted everywhere. So it is a stress reducer for sure. If you suffer any sort of anxiety, it definitely will help people with anxiety sort of manage it, be able to calm themselves down. Um, people with high blood pressure, if that high blood pressure is caused by stress, then therefore as the stress lowers, their blood pressure lowers as well. So that's a couple of physical things, but there's also emotional things. When you sit in meditation, you become connected to your emotions, you can sometimes learn or usually learn to separate out your thoughts from your emotions to your feelings. And you realize you have some really crazy thoughts sometimes, and they really don't reflect who you are or even how you feel or what you believe. They just randomly go through your head. They're often somebody else's voice. And when you sit in meditation, you tune into that and it allows you to become more self-aware so that you know and understand yourself better instead of believing all the voices that are in your head. And I know that sounds like it might be a mental illness, but it's not. <laughs> Trust me, we all have the voices in our head. You might even hear um, people refer to it as like the monkey mind or the overactive mind. Like there's just a common, like a constant commentary going on in your brain all the time. So meditation sort of teaches you to not pay so much attention to that, to allow your mind to calm down, realizing that those thoughts will just go and you don't have to follow them. So that's the why. And if you look it up there, you'll find lists and lists of the benefits of meditation. I'm only scratching the surface. So just knowing that, I feel like that is reason enough to meditate, right? So um, one of the next questions might be like, all right, well, great. I want to meditate, but I don't even understand what meditation is. So I like the description or the definition that says it is a practice that involves relaxation and attention. So that's all, all it really is. That's all it has to be is just tuning in, relaxing the body, calming the mind, and just letting yourself pay attention to what happens. Um, you will also hear references of maybe referring to it as mindfulness, like a mindfulness practice. And that is indeed a very good definition. Um, sometimes it's just sitting in reflection. So there are times, you know, you're going through a lot in life or you've maybe accomplished a lot. Sometimes it's worth <clears throat> spending a little bit of time just sitting with your thoughts and sort of analyzing how you think and feel about something. And while a lot of people don't think of that as a meditation, it really is. Um, it's really anytime you're focusing your attention on one thing and not just following those thoughts down the rabbit holes. Next, I feel like in order to explain and really understand what meditation is, you have to also think about what meditation is not. Because I feel like there are some misconceptions about meditation and those misconceptions often keep people from meditating. So the one thing it is not is a trance. You're not zoning out and going into some sort of hypnotic state that is not meditation. Um, many people think, or maybe not many people, but I have heard people um, have said to me that they've always thought meditation sort of opens you up to things that you shouldn't be open to, um, whether, I don't know if it means the devil or just bad thoughts or um, suggestion, almost like a hypnotic state again, that like maybe while you're in meditation, you're going to be open up and 
to something that you wouldn't normally, and that is not true either. Also, um, for many people, I hear that they can't meditate because they can't stop thinking. So let me tell you right now that meditation is not stopping your thoughts. Your thoughts will always happen. As long as your body is alive, your brain is functioning, thoughts are happening. It's what your brain does. You can't stop it. But what you do learn to do is just sort of ignore the thoughts that you don't feel like paying attention to and paying attention to the ones that you do. So it's a way of just sort of not really controlling your thoughts, but just accepting them and learning from them and not allowing them to control you. Make sense? So there are many different types of meditation and you could break it down. If you do a quick Google search on types of meditations, you can find like lists that are like 12 different types of meditation or um, probably even more than that. You can categorize them in many different ways, but I tend to think of really a basic four-ish categories. So first is a breathing meditation, and that is simply focusing on your breath. Now, keep in mind, you're going to breathe during all types of meditation, and you're probably going to do some amount of focusing on the breath. But with a breathing meditation, you are specifically watching the breath and possibly even changing the pattern of your breath. So an example of this might be um, when people say like inhale to a count of four, pause for a count of two or a count of four, and then exhale for a count of eight. So really slowing your exhale down, taking a pause, inhaling for four. So just doing that, like it's just a certain pattern that you're keeping with your breath. So that pattern, just watching your breath, concentrating on your breath in that manner, just helps remove the focus from all of those thoughts. So again, the thoughts aren't going anywhere. We're just focusing on our breath. <clears throat> The next and probably the most common is what I just referred to as a mindfulness meditation. This can be, again, breathing, which really is sort of a mindfulness meditation, paying attention to the breath, but maybe with a little less control. So maybe not forcing it, it's just watching it, watching the sensations of the body, whether it be just watching the breath and noticing like the sensation as the air comes through your nostrils, through your throat, how you feel like a movement in your chest. Um, just being aware of that. It could be um, using like your gaze to look out at something and notice how many different colors that you can see or closing your eyes and just seeing how many sounds can you hear. Just being aware and mindful of the sensations and of the things that are happening to you and around you. Third would be visualization. So Visualization is often done as a guided meditation, but not always. You can do a visualization yourself, and it's just as it sounds. It is using your imagination to visualize yourself somewhere else. Usually, it's visualizing yourself meditating somewhere else. So instead of being in this lovely room, I could close my eyes and visualize that I'm meditating at the beach. I could visualize that I'm walking in the woods. I could do anything that just gives me, again, it's just a focus, something to focus on, a little bit different than the thoughts going through your head. It's not going into a trance and being somewhere else. It's just using that nice visualization as a nice focus. And lastly, I would say movement is another one. So a movement meditation or meditation in movement. This could be anything from a walking meditation, which and it is a mindfulness meditation. You are up and you're moving and you're paying attention to maybe the sounds of your feet, the sensations of your body, anything that you see or hear while you're walking. Um, it's People sometimes will think of running like, like a runner, <laughs> but consider running probably a meditation because they're just into it. They're hearing the pattern of their feet hitting the pavement. They're just tuning into their breath and they're just in the zone. And that really is a meditation as well. So those are the basic four that I consider. Um, again, you could break many of those down further um, and you could probably add a couple that might be slightly different than those, but you get the gist. 
And then I also just want to mention, which I did briefly when I said the guided meditation, you can do meditations where you listen to a recording of someone's voice, similar to like listening to me talk to you now, walking you through a meditation, or you could even um, go to a group meditation and meditate in a room with other people where someone is probably guiding you into some in some manner. And it could be any of those. They could be guiding you through a visualization. They could be guiding you through a breathing meditation. It could be any of those things. And guided meditations are nice. And I know beginners especially love them because they feel like they have someone there telling them what to do and that makes them feel good. However, meditation is a quick and easy tool that you can use in the moment. It doesn't have to be like, okay, at this time of day, I'm going to sit down and meditate. It can be, I'm having a moment right now and I need to just sit and breathe and like calm myself down. <laughs> so I do a lot of those meditations and I have all of it for years, but you can't do that if you need a guided meditation. So it's very hard to be at work having a bad day and just know that you just need to go breathe, tune into your body and your mind and your heart and your soul and remember that like, you're okay if you have to take your phone and listen to a guided meditation. It makes it a little more difficult. So if you can just do it on your own without guidance, that's even better. So I like a combination of both, but I definitely feel it's worth learning how to meditate on your own and not just relying on guided meditations. So that brings us to, all right, now what? How do I meditate, right? <laughs> so once you've decided what type you want to start with, I often recommend people start with either some sort of a breathing meditation or a mindfulness meditation or sort of a combination of the two you really just need to sit somewhere comfortable so you will often see people seated, seated on a cushion with their legs all curled up and being low disposition if that's what you're used to seeing their hands are in like a little mantra um that's not necessary and actually when you're really beginning probably not even optional or not optional optimal that's the word i'm looking for um you want to be comfortable. So you want to be wearing comfortable clothes, nothing too restrictive. You want to be able to breathe so you don't want something tight around your waist. You want to be seated in a way that you can sit for a couple minutes without a leg falling asleep or anything like that. So just finding a comfortable chair, that's really all you need. You can sit on the floor. You can sit on a cushion. In the beginning, you're probably not going to be meditating long, so it's really okay to, you know, not go too crazy with this, but you want to be comfortable. As a matter of fact, one of my favorite meditators um, is a guy named David G. And he always says, comfort is queen. And that's like his number one rule of meditating. Be sure you're comfortable. Um, so I often just do it seated in a chair. Sometimes I'm seated at the foot of my bed. Sometimes I'm on a meditation cushion, like right now. <laughs> so I like variety and it all depends on where I am, what time of day it is, what's going on, what my purpose is. So for you, I would suggest if you are truly a beginner, just find a comfortable place to sit. You want to be um, like upright if you can with a straight spine. Laying down is great. However, you can probably uh, figure this out yourself that if you're laying down, the chances are you're going to go to sleep. Just it's just going to happen, <laughs> um, especially if you're going to try doing like multiple minutes of meditation. So I would recommend sitting to start. There is a time and a place for lying down, but, you know, start with sitting. It's the, probably the best idea. And then once you're comfortable, you're simply going to close your eyes. Or if closing your eyes doesn't feel right to you, just sort of Flutter your eyes down a little bit and soften your gaze so that you're not really focusing on anything. You're just sort of gazing down at the floor. Um, just again, so you're not getting all that visual information of what's going on in the room around you. Just trying to like cut that down. So closing your eyes and you can do it now if you want. Go ahead, close your eyes. And then just take a couple deep breaths to relax the body. So breathing in, exhale it out. 
take a couple more breaths like this and with each exhalation allow your body to relax a little bit really focusing in on the places we hold tension and tightness like our face and our shoulders and our belly you may notice that we often as we breathe hold our belly in and that is wrong so soften the muscles of your belly let your belly like relax so that when you inhale your belly extends outward so you really get in a nice deep breath even without forcing it it just gently flows into your belly and then allowing your breath to return to normal like a normal pace you're not taking deep breaths you're just breathing easy relaxed breaths and i'm going to invite you to simply count your inhales and your exhales so you inhale counting one exhale counting two inhale three exhale four inhale five exhale six inhale seven exhale eight inhale nine exhale 10 and you can stop there if you want or you can just keep going starting back at one inhaling exhaling till 10 and do it as many times as feels good to you and then when you're done and you've decided okay that's all i'm going to do now i suggest taking one big cleansing breath keeping your eyes closed and then maybe with your next big deep breath as you exhale, sort of tilt your head down just a little bit while you open your eyes. It does just help to bring you back to the, your space a little more easy, a little calmer. So you're not just going from eyes closed to wham, everything that's in the room sort of assaulting you. It's kind of a gentle return back to your space. So try that and see how it works for you. Again, it's simple, not complicated. You can do it pretty much anywhere because again even if you are say at work sitting at a desk you don't have to close your eyes you can just sort of gaze down so I have done this while sitting at my computer so that anybody who kind of glances by thinks that I'm working <laughs> and what I'm really doing is taking a few deep breaths really calming myself bringing myself back to center and not that I was like you know crazy jumping out of my skin to begin with, but sometimes a little bit of stress, that's all you need. That is why you hear people say, if you're angry, take five deep breaths, right? Just tuning into your breath calms your body down. It reduces stress literally in your body. Like it calms your stress response down. So just being able to do that anywhere, great tool. And then if you want to ask me like, how long should I meditate? Okay, that was great. I could just do it counting to 10 and then be done. That seems kind of short, but I don't want to sit for an hour, <laughs> right? Who has time for that? So when you ask the question, how long should I meditate? My answer is, if you read a lot of meditation books, which you're probably not going to, and that's okay. I've read a lot for you. <laughs> um, most people who meditate a lot and are really big into the meditation scene if there is such a thing, we'll tell you, you should meditate 20 minutes in the morning and 20 minutes at night. Now that is a lot of meditating. <laughs> it really is. Even for someone like me who meditates a lot, I do not meditate 20 minutes in the morning and 20 minutes at night. I suggest for a beginner, you start with only a minute or two. If you try to sit by yourself in meditation for much longer than that, you're probably going to struggle because we're used to having our phones. We're used to, oh, well, there just are so many distractions, whether it be the distractions coming from your phone or just your to-do lists or anything else that's going on. So starting small and just, just sit, do nothing, take a few breaths. That is a meditation. And then as that starts to feel very comfortable, you can either change up the meditation, like maybe, um, watch some guided meditations just to get some ideas on other meditations <clears throat> which could just be repeating a phrase in your head that's called a mantra meditation i like to do that um, sometimes 
when I'm just stressed, I will just come up with a mantra. It doesn't have to be um, a Sanskrit word. It doesn't have to be anything other than I'm peaceful. <laughs> I'm peaceful. I'm peaceful, right? You're saying it. it's positive. It's calming. You're not going to say it quite that fast. And you're going to say it in your head. So again, you can do this anywhere. It doesn't really matter. Um, so just maybe play with a different type of meditation. And then, or before, whichever, and then start elongating now. Add a couple minutes. So if you want to just stick with this breathing meditation, do it for a week, one minute, two minutes a morning. Then maybe next week, do it three minutes and see how that goes. Then maybe decide to change up and try a different meditation. It's up to you. I just urge you to decide what type of meditation you are going to do before you start so that you stick with it. Because I will tell you, your brain is going to do everything it can to distract you from sitting and being quiet. So you're going to start with this breathing meditation, just counting your breath. And then your brain is going to say, oh, you know what, maybe I should try that inhale for four, exhale for four. And then you'll try that. And then your brain will say, wait a minute, maybe I should think, concentrate on all the sounds I hear while I'm sitting here. Okay, yeah, let's do that. And so it turn, your brain will try to turn your meditation into this weird train of thought. <laughs> but don't let it. Pick what you're going to do. Do it for a couple minutes. Call it good. Move on. Now, Another question you might have is when, when should I do this? So I've already indicated that I meditate often, anytime. I, it's like an emergency stress response, but it is nice to have a daily practice. Now, most people will tell you that in the morning and right before bed are probably the two optimal times to meditate. And that is true. Morning is very nice because A, you're sort of close to sleep, right? So if you meditate the as soon as you get up, I mean, so David G again, that my favorite meditator, he ha says um, his routine is RPM, rise, pee, meditate. That's what he does every morning, which I think is hysterical. But the idea being that meditation and sleep have some similarities. So if you can meditate early in the morning when your brain is still just coming out of that sleep state, that you might find it a little easier to just sit and be calm and watch your thoughts. I also think there is a very just convenience of your day hasn't happened yet. You haven't gotten derailed. It's like, I feel like that's the reason I like to exercise first thing in the morning is because if I say I'm going to do it later, things happen, my day gets away from me and I don't actually do it. So just doing it first thing in the morning is very beneficial. Now, right before bed, Clearly, meditation calms you down. It's reducing your stress, you're relaxing your body, you're tuning into your breath. So you can probably see where that could help you fall asleep and stay asleep. So yes, you can meditate right before bed. You can actually meditate in the middle of the night. I do this often if I wake up and I'm struggling to get back to sleep. It's one of the few times that I actually want my meditation to put me to sleep and I will lay there in bed and just meditate on whatever I choose to meditate on, usually just my breath. Sometimes it's a progressive relaxation, just trying to relax the body, really focusing on that until I fall back to sleep. So you can meditate really whenever you want. I have meditated in my car in the parking lot because that's where I was and that's when I needed it. Um, I have meditated actually in my car in my driveway, just coming like back from work, just trying to do like that, switching over from one gear to the other. It's just a moment of like, all right, work is done. It's behind. Now I'm here at home putting on this hat. So you can use it that as well. So you can meditate anytime, pretty much anywhere. And lastly, some people will ask me like, what sort of tools do you need to meditate? Like what should you have? Now, if you were paying attention earlier, don't really need anything. Comfortable clothes, a comfortable place to sit. That is what you need. That is what is most important. If, however, you decide like, ah, that's great, but I have like this cute little meditation nook that I just created <laughs> and I want to sit every morning, even if it's just five or 10 minutes. So, like, so if you're meditating five or 10 minutes, you've been meditating for a little while, right? Good job. So, so we're going to meditate. 
we want it to feel a little bit more like a practice, like, like, like having a yoga mat for yoga, having your meditation cushion for a meditation. So if you are at that place and that is what you want, um, I have put a couple links in the description of this video for a couple styles of mats that I like. Now, keep in mind, you can spend a lot of money on meditation mats. So I don't recommend that. If you want a, a, a mat, that's fine. If you want a cushion, you can find some decently priced cushions on Amazon. I have one that is sort of like a two tiered one. So my butt is up on the highest tier and my legs are on the lower tier. I find that to be the most comfortable for me. I have also recreated that when I don't have that mat with me, but I want to meditate and I want to be on a cushion with just using a yoga bolster and maybe a yoga blanket, um, putting the blanket down to be the cushion under my legs, the bolster to be underneath my hips. Um, just having your hips up a little bit higher than your knees just makes it a little more comfortable and it will allow you to sit for a little bit longer. So that's just to keep in mind. And I like the yoga bolster as well, because then you can use it in um, like a restorative yoga pose. So we talked about, you know, sitting in for meditation or lying down. You can do a restorative yoga pose and just hang out there while you meditate. Um, that can be really comfy. Um, again, you might fall asleep, but it feels good. So experiment. So if you're interested in those, check out the links. Um, I do get a small... Um, fee or commission if you buy those, but it, it doesn't affect your price. So it's up to you. If you're interested, go ahead, um, check them out and um, get meditating. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Again, my name is Tracy Martirana and I bring my knowledge of nutrition, herbalism, Ayurveda, yoga, and meditation to provide information and inspiration so you can live a healthy, happy, and balanced life. Have a great day and don't forget to hit the subscribe button.